Well, my last video on this topic is a half hour doozy on everything that happened, but in short, this is Ken Wax. He started off doing business TikToks, but later on became a self-proclaimed TikTok investigator after he claimed he was almost kidnapped twice. Well, what happened? He was offered a free ride twice. I'm not joking. So he then started to link together a bunch of missing people in Chicago where he assumed a criminal organization offered them a free ride before kidnapping them. Keyword, assumed. I don't know if all of these cases are connected. These cases happening all over the country, but I do know that is the same method of operating for all of these cases that's the only thing that makes sense these people are leaving bars for the most part drunk at night alone walking somewhere and they are then offered a ride there's obviously no evidence of them being offered that ride Wait, what i mean you say that so confidently but you follow it up by saying there's obviously no evidence what is it then well this is a clear pattern with this guy there's a lot of assuming going on for a very hyperbolic story all for tiktok it's safe to say that he got lost in the sauce i mean they started off kind of sane his videos but for every video he made they just became less and less sane he just completely spiraled out of control because each video he posted just became more and more unhinged but then to add the the icing to the cake. He said he spent all of his waking hours trying to solve this case. But when he started to pull millions of views per video, suddenly out of nowhere, he had a startup to solicit investments for, which he started to promote to his audience. So here's a quick clip from my last video. Hey Jasmine, hope you've been well. I would love to show you what I've been working on. For the last eight months or so, I've been building this app called Foresight. Foresight is a combination of a social calendar so you actually know what your schedule is. It is a travel planner that helps you build itineraries for the trips of your dreams. And soon it will also be a discovery platform helping you find amazing experiences in any part of the world. Also, shameless plug, you can actually invest directly into the company itself. And this is all filed with the SEC. We've raised $166,000 and we have a goal of about 200,000 before this round ends. Our next round of funding, our seed round, is guaranteed come early June if we deliver against a couple of milestones that they set for us. So that 200000 if we hit it, gives us more than enough runway to get past that goal. So it's really cool. Let me know if you have any questions about Borset. I am happy to answer as a co-founder and chief marketing officer of the company. Thank you. Wait a second. Hold up. Pause. So he created a true crime series on TikTok, and he's now trying to raise money from those viewers for a true travel app. Huh. Then he says they're tripling their valuation the next couple of weeks, which also sounds odd. Going to your audience to ask for investment this early sounds incredibly sketchy to me. To me, that sounds like they're struggling to find funding because why are they not raising from accredited investors? People then started to call him out, including an ex-military investigator. I think maybe he, he might believe that this is real, but nonetheless, I just want to come here and say without a shadow of a doubt from an actual former investigator, Ken is BS. Pretty much from then it all went downhill from Ken. Because then Ken posted a video claiming that he was almost recruited by the FBI, but that turned out to be false. Then he made another video claiming that he has now joined an investigative team and he showed some like card as a prop that had an Egyptian eye on it. So that made him seem very believable and very sane. We essentially just saw a man starting to LARP as an investigator in real time. He even went on to say that he cracked the case. I hope you're ready for this then because last night at three in the morning, I cracked the case. I was able to crack it last night because of you. But then goes on to say this. We are getting close. We are right there. And we're going to get this done soon. So again, which one is it, Ken? Then he allegedly scammed a grieving family by having them pay him to give them more information on their missing son, which he then no-showed for. So definitely a lot of weird antics on Ken's side. But then he kind of made this half-assed apology for this. I'd like to take a moment to address something that has come to a head over last week. As many of you know, this investigation has been my all-consuming passion over about the last month. And what started as my honest effort to bring more awareness to a serious public safety matter, my reporting on this topic has since turned into a contentious subject. And I now realize that it's not my place at all to continue chasing this story despite my own personal connection to it with those two attempts on me. I, I bit off a lot. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping as much as I should. I've burnt myself out and I frankly got a little bit lost in the sauce over this story. I acknowledge that it was insensitive to reference my startup on those two occasions and posts pertaining to this case. I'm a passionate guy who's passionate about the stories that I follow and of course about the content that I make. But I made a mistake by intersecting those two parts of my life and I want to apologize for the families impacted for having overlapped this other part of my life in this in an inappropriate setting. 
it won't happen again. And the information about the suspects that my team and I were, have been able to find has been passed to the proper authorities. I've decided to no longer post about this story publicly to prevent further conflict. I, I care so much about this case, I really do, but I realize that I can't report on it while balancing this other pursuit and my life. So thank you. Watching it again makes me think he's even less sincere. But we're now caught up to the whole situation since my last video. But what happened next? Well, apparently he apologized again and he got fired from the startup he was promoting. Well, since his last apology is fresh on the mind, we might as well start off with watching his new one. Hey y'all, I uh, wanted to try to answer some of the questions I've gotten about the investigation over the last week and make some clarifications in regards to my now former employer. Uh, first of all, I completely understand some of the criticisms that have been thrown my way over the last week, and I completely own up to the mistakes that I made. Uh, I do want to clarify once again that my former employer never had any input at all in the content that I was making here on my personal account. Their only involvement was celebrating what they saw as an increase in social media engagement that their now former CMO indirectly created for the company. Uh, they are a great young company, and they're doing some incredible things, and I wish them all the best truly as we move forward uh, separately. I never had any intention of involving them in my personal investigatory project. As for that work, it was and still is very real, and I'm gonna continue to take a break from posting publicly about it, but please know that all the information that is still being sent to me is still being passed through to the proper authorities. So uh, I hope that this entire story saga can be the beginning of a different conversation about ethics, maybe in the digital age, and this can serve as an example of what not to do when trying to juggle so many things in a public forum such as TikTok. I, I know that I've personally learned a lot. Um, so thank you again for giving me the time. I'm looking forward to going back to making content about business and tech in my life and the countless other topics that I'm interested. And so I'll, I'll see y'all again soon. And thanks again. I don't feel like that cleared up anything. If anything, made me more confused. Uh, <laughs> so he's now going back to making TikToks about tech. He's no longer a investigator LARP on TikTok anymore. Huh. Okay there, Ken. For context, where he was talking about his old company celebrating what he said, there was a TikToker who made a video on a LinkedIn post by, I guess, his former boss. It was celebrating what he was doing to the platform. And what he was doing was essentially just bringing in loads of traffic. Now, he said it wasn't really his intention to start bringing up this app during this investigation, but so many of his videos turned into essentially ads for this app. He even started to raise funds through his platform, which makes me not really believe him here ethically what this guy did is weird as hell that's for sure because essentially like he went viral trying to loosely connect people's tragedies and then use that popularity to try to raise money for a startup which now removed him and i'm also just not too sure about the whole startup removing him because this just sounds like oh ken's very hot right now let's uh distance ourselves from him until he cools down a little bit then we can bring him back i'm completely assuming now i'm not saying anything from this company. I, I don't know what's going on, but that, that's what it sounds like to me. I want to call BS on him saying I never really intended to implement this company into my content because it seemed like a very clear strategy. And then my next question is, did they just remove him from as a CMO? And does he still have shares in this company? Because they, they could have just removed his public face from the company and he still owns a portion because he said he was a co-founder because I doubt that they bought him out of the company over this. I think they just wanted to get rid of him as a public representative of the marketing aspect of this company. But Foresight actually came out on some more details on after he was fired. So here in an Insider article, Foresight, a one-year-old startup that helps users plan and budget travels and friends, told Insider on Monday that it has decided to part ways with Wax, who served as a chief marketing officer in the wake of recent events. In the wake of recent events. So, so there we go. I mean, like they were celebrating Ken when there was good publicity coming, but as soon as the bad publicity came, get rid of him. <sighs> I don't like what Ken did on TikTok, but I also don't like what this company did as well. Imagine if this company does extremely well in the future and Ken missed out on it just because of some backlash on TikTok. I mean, he did it to himself. What he did was morally and ethically messed up. But for the company to completely ditch him, I'm not surprised, but it also feels wrong. But we barely only scratched the surface of everything that Ken did. So if you want to watch the full story, you can check that out in this video right here. Also, I'm finally home from vacation now, so there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming. Peace.